In the top stories, Sir Hilary Beckles says regional economies are under threat from sargassum seaweed. A government minister believes raising the retirement age next year could spell trouble and Barbados win the regional women's Super 50 cricket title. Welcome to Nation News from Monday, August 17, 2015. I'm Natasha Beckles. We are bringing the best of October 2015 to you. We live all the action from the Swedish Summer Festival in this year's Quapova Souvenir Magazine. Experience the carnival feeling over and over again with photos from all the major events. The Quapova Souvenir 2015 will be available on New Stands Island Wide on August 5th or online at www.nationnews.com. To get your copy for only $5, call the Nation Publishing House at 430-5550 or 430-5501. Professor Sir Hilary Beckles has described the influx of sargassum seaweed in the region as the greatest single threat to Caribbean economies and an international crisis. The Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies has therefore called for the establishment of a sargassum support fund and an emergency agency to coordinate a regional response. We must have an international response to this. There is need for a sargassum support fund. We must have that response at the global level. How do we coordinate all of this? We need to speak in terms of metaphors from time to time, because what sargasm is saying to us is that the solution to all Caribbean problems must be Caribbean in focus. This is what it's saying to us. That we cannot find singular solutions. We cannot find solutions within the confines of our insularity. Sir Hilary was speaking at the start of a Sargassum Symposium at UE Cave Hill on Monday. It brought together representatives from regional governments and international partners. The Barbados Secondary Teachers Union has given the all clear for its members to return to Combermere School in September. You may recall that students and staff were temporarily relocated the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic last term after several reported feeling unwell. BSTU President Mary Redmond says the union is largely satisfied that all the major problems at the Waterford School have been addressed. There was an independent study done by PAHO and that was done, ministry officials said, in an effort to, to ensure or promote transparency. and. Of course, the Ministry of Health has been involved, the Ministry of Labor, REA, which is a private environmental agency. All of those people were at the stakeholders meeting on the 11th of August. And based on all of their reports, it appears that the environment is safe enough at this point in time for students and teachers to return to the school environment. Ms. Redman, however, told the media conference there are still outstanding issues which need to be addressed in the short order, such as the removal of chemicals. She said this is an issue not only at Combermere, but also other secondary schools. Meantime, the BSTU is standing firm that teachers will not be marking school-based assessments unless they are paid. On Friday, Caribbean Examinations Council Registrar Glenroy Cumberbatch said this was an issue teachers should take up with their employers. However, Ms. Redmond is adamant that CXC is responsible. She says teachers in Guyana have taken a similar stance and other teachers' unions in the region are engaging their members on the issue. Ms. Redmond also reacted to comments made by Education Minister Ronald Jones on Friday. The minister's comments in the Saturday Sun of August 15, 2015, where he states that they would be paying attention to arrive at a solution which would better understand the needs of the students rather than of the teachers or administrators. We found that instructive up until the point where those sentiments to us reflect what in large measure has been the modus operandi of the Ministry of Education in recent times to put, in many instances, the needs of the teacher last. And we find these sentiments even more unfortunate, coming from a past teacher and a past union president. Teachers' needs, to our mind, have to be put first. 
Those needs, when they're put first, always redound to the benefit of students. When you make the working conditions of teachers comfortable, the learning conditions of students are the best that they can possibly be. Gun violence continued in Barbados over the weekend, leaving three teenagers and an older man suffering gunshot wounds. 18-year-old cousins Ridge Williams and Dante Allen had to run for their lives late Saturday after two masked men opened fire on a group of men linemen at Whitehall No. 3, St. Michael. Mr. Allen was treated and discharged at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, while Mr. Williams was due to undergo surgery. Around 3 a.m. on Sunday, 17-year-old Akeem Stewart was reportedly shot several times by masked men while at Bamboo Road, St. Lawrence Gap. Also on Sunday, around 4.30 p.m., 62-year-old Leroy St. Clair Hall was shot at Reservoir Road, Lodge Hill, St. Michael. He was taken to hospital by ambulance. Police say they conducted searches in a bushy area where the incident occurred and a homemade pipe gun was discovered, along with 578 cannabis plants and 396 seedlings. Housing Minister Dennis Kelman is warning that a decision to increase the retirement age to 67 from next year will create problems for Barbados. He was speaking during a Habitat 3 meeting on Sunday night, during which the country's aging population turned out to be a hot-button issue. Mr. Kelman agreed that the financial well-being of the national insurance scheme must be considered. However, he suggested that workers above a certain age should become entrepreneurs and leave employment opportunities for younger people. Yes, we are having an age society, but sometimes we have to ask ourselves, is whether that approach that has been passed to us is the right approach. Because whereas we are looking after the senior citizens, in terms of empowering them and allowing them to work longer, a question that must be asked, when we stretch that age to 67, what impact it is having on those younger persons who are coming out of school and looking to gain employment and the employment opportunities are being limited, but yet we are keeping people in the employment much longer. It means it's going to take longer for those younger persons to have an opportunity to share in the work aspect of life. Minister of Culture Stephen Lashley has promised to address the contentious issues which raised their head during this year's Corpova Festival, like the payment of VAT on complimentary tickets and costumes gave the assurance to tent managers and band leaders during the annual Crop Over Awards ceremony on Saturday night at Hilton Barbados. Mr. Lashley said he has suggested to the Ministry of Finance that a conversation should take place on the matter, while the National Cultural Foundation will be coordinating a team to help band leaders sort out their VAT issues. A retired judge says Barbados should not embark on constitutional reform simply to replace the Governor General with a president. Instead, Leroy Innes believes the Constitution should only be reviewed if far-reaching changes are being considered. He made the comments on Saturday during the second in the Public Legal Education Lecture Series entitled Your Rights Under the Constitution. That is not the only thing. You have to look at the powers within the Constitution. You have to look at the organs of the Constitution to see if this Constitution was given to us 50 years ago by the British government. It's about time that we get our own Constitution. Are there not some things that we have realized since we've been lived through the 50 years of our constitution that we believe we'll be better served by our constitution if we make certain changes? The powers that some institutions or some persons may have, the involvement of the community in the day-to-day -day activity of the life of the country, those are the kinds of things that we should be looking at seriously when we look at constitution reform, not just Governor General or President. Mr. Innes also spoke about the Defamation Act. He said while comments made on social media continue to be difficult to police, the law will eventually catch up. As time goes on, I am sure that more and more prosecutions will be brought. And some countries, sorry, some countries have passed legislation to deal with defamation in, in that respect. But just as it took us time to get to this stage for one to be able to use social media to defame others, it will, after a while it will become even easier to find how to deal with persons who use that. Because you have a right 
to your own, not just much respect, you have a right to your own good name. Everyone's a right to his good name, a right not to be defamed. Leonie Griffith is Barbados' latest centenarian. She celebrated on Monday at the Good Citizens Care Home, along with members of the Britain Hill Christian Mission Church. Choruses and Bible passages were major items on the program for the former preacher, who has no children and does not know her extended family. Her nurse, Marcia Brathwaite Reese, said Mrs. Griffith can no longer see, but she knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. In sport, the jubilant Caribbean cricket queens returned to Barbados on Monday laden with hardware. Barbados defeated defending champions Jamaica by 124 runs on Sunday in Trinidad and Tobago to win the regional women's Super 50 cricket tournament. Led by 19-year-old captain Shaquana Quinton, Barbados scored 242 for 7 and bowled out Jamaica for 118. Barbados Gems finished 13th at the World Netball Championships over the weekend in Sydney, Australia. Barbados defeated Zambia 53-38, winning the last three matches of the tournament. Australia won their third straight title, beating New Zealand 58-55 in the final. We also congratulate IDL Sandwalkers Quarry Isolation Cavaliers, who defeated Old Brig and Dover by 65 runs to win the Sajikar Shield Cricket Competition. And finally, Corduroy, a 26-year-old cat in Oregon, has been named the oldest living cat by Guinness World Records. It's actually the second time he has claimed the title. Corduroy was first recognized last year until officials discovered another cat, Tiffany Two, which lived to be just over 27. Corduroy reclaimed the title after Tiffany Two's death. His owner Ashley says he is still active and in good health, except for some kidney problems. For his birthday on August 1st, Ashley brought him a live white mouse, which she says he enjoyed right away. And that's where we end Nation News for Monday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Remember to pick up your Daily Nation on Tuesday or subscribe to our e-paper. Thank you so much for joining us.